Quantower Algo Simple Trading Strategy In the previous video, we have studied how to set up the Quantower Algo development environment and create a first simple indicator. The link to that video will be available in the top right corner and in the description section. Today we will dive into the automation process. Trading Strategy Development Let's assume that we unraveled the price movement model on some symbol and are ready to automate our trading. The testing period for our strategy will be one week. First of all, we should open Visual Studio and create a new project. We will be using one of the ready templates called the One Symbol Strategy. This template has symbol and account parameters already declared in it, and we are not going to use the data from more than one symbol at once. Now let's give the name to our project and proceed to code. For the testing purposes we need a starting price, so let's declare it and call my price. The value is the one that I've found among the selected period of history. Now let's get down to the logic. We are going to initiate the trading operations depending on the last price change. That's why we should append the checking whether the current last price is over the my price value. If true, we're gonna place a buy order. In the place order function, we will refer to the strategy parameters such as symbol and account. In order to close our position, we will open the opposite order when the price will be below the my price value. Let's build this project and test how this logic works on historical data. To do this, we should open a strategy runner panel and select our newborn strategy in it. In general, this panel consists of two blocks. Parameters and results. But if you switch to the backtest mode, you will see another block devoted to the backtesting environment. Here we're gonna spend our time today. First, we need to specify the historical period for testing. I think one week will be enough. Next, we should specify a symbol to provide the historical data for testing. The build from value specifies the data aggregation, while the executing type says what data type should be used for testing. We will set to build from one minute and use the last values. In case your strategy requires some additional data for analysis, you may specify multiple symbols for the testing environment. But we don't need it now. There is also an additional settings screen allowing to set up some market-specific parameters, such as netting type and fee per trade, as well as initial balance and modeling scheme settings. The strategy has its own parameters that are currently declared in our code symbol, and account. They were automatically filled with the values from our backtesting environment. The last interesting feature of the strategy runner panel is the testing mode. By default, it is set to interactive mode, which will allow us to track the testing process more precisely and even control its speed. Now let's hit the run button and see the magic happen. From this moment, the results section will be at the center of our attention. Here we see that strategy loads the history of our symbol and starts the backtester processes. When the strategy starts we can see the history playback progress bar and visualizer button on the right side of the symbol row. This button allows us to open some panels and visually track the strategy operation during the history playback. The most interesting panels are account performance, showing the trading results of your strategy, and chart panel, which will display trades using a visual trading interface. Okay, we see that our strategy works and places orders one after another giving us a huge balance drawdown, and that is not what we need, so let's stop it. Please note, when you stop your strategy, all of its statistics will be lost. We need to modify our code and add some kind of additional control logic. Let's create a Boolean value in market to define whether we already have an open position. Now it's time to add a check before placing a buy order, allowing strategy to trade only if we are not in the market. Let's set an in-market value to true after sending an order so the strategy could understand that we are in. 
We need to modify an in-market value on closing order also, so I'm gonna copy this code after sending a sell order. Now build the strategy and open the strategy runner. You will notice the new version label right near the run button. It indicates that there is a new version or current strategy that needs to be applied in the runner panel. Apply new code by clicking this button and then let's start our strategy. We see that now our strategy behaves differently and it's good. Now go back to our code. It would be good to control the order's quantity via the strategy runner panel interface, so we need to add a new input parameter. Just append it after the other parameters. Specify the name, sorting weight, and variable. Now we should append this value to our place order functions. The new quantity input parameter will be added to strategy settings, where you can easily change it later. Now let's add some variable for monitoring and results. Find the onGetMetrics method and append my price value. Now we see this value in the results block. I think this strategy is still not good enough, so we need to make it smarter. Let's add some kind of stop loss and take profit orders. To do this, we should tell a strategy to wait for some price change before closing the position. Let's take profit if the price rises 10 points and set that price as my price. Now I'm gonna modify the code of the downward price movement and apply a similar logic here except we should control whether the price falls down at least 5 points. Ok, now build, update, run. We see that at some point in history, strategy behaves strangely, starting to place numerous orders. This means that we have a logical fail somewhere. Let's find it and fix it. Seems like I've forgotten to change the orders side when copied the code block. Now the strategy seems to be working better. By the way, let's write some info about strategy actions into the results section log. To do this, just refer to the log method specifying a required text string. Now you will see the log message when the my price value changes. One more, we can add a variable value here for better understanding. Oh, I've found another bug in my strategy that was causing inappropriate behavior. My advice? 
Double check the code when copy pasting it. Ok, now I like how my strategy is working. Currently, you see that using an interactive mode, the backtesting process has a limited maximum speed, but what if we don't need to visualize the strategy operation, but just get the final results? Turning the interactive mode off will enable the maximum possible speed of the backtesting, and you will see that the same period of history was processed much faster. Being sure that your strategy works like you expected, just switch to live operation mode, specify your live trading parameters, and hit the run button. Don't forget that you can stop your strategy anytime and manually close all positions and cancel orders if needed. Finally, I should mention that you can visualize the backtesting process in various panels such as time and sales, DOM surface, and TPO chart. The choice is up to you. We believe that this example will inspire you to create one of the best and profitable trading strategies ever or at least will help you automate some trading routines. Just remember, your imagination is the only limit. Thanks for watching our tutorials. Please ask your questions in comments and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future videos from our team.